Well, good morning, all, and welcome to this worship on the 24th Sunday after Pentecost, which uh, some are celebrating as All Saints Sunday. We did that last Sunday, so we're back to Pentecost. <laughs> um, so welcome, all. I invite you to mute yourselves um, as we enjoy our organ prelude, which is tuba tune in D major um, by C.S. Lang. Wonderful. Thank you, Evan. And welcome to those who have joined us during the prelude. Um, um, I look forward to this service. We will be hearing a message from Reverend Guy this morning um, as he will preach for us. So let us join together uh, with Rachel in singing our procession hymn, We Are All One in Mission.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy okay. Spirit. Like, mm. And blessed be God's reign, now and forever. Amen. Together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you and also with you let us pray God our true light train us to see with more than our eyes and to hear with more than our ears then with your help we will draw closer to the Messiah who turned the values of the world upside down and established love as the most precious treasure for your name's sake amen And we will now hear the Shema Israel. A reading from the book of Ruth. No, we're, we're going to hear the Shema Israel first, I think.
now a reading from the book of Ruth. Naomi, her mother-in-law said to her, my daughter, I need to seek some security for you so that it may be well with you. Now here is our kinsman, Boaz, with whose young women you have been working. See, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Now wash and anoint yourself and put on your best clothes and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down, and he will tell you what to do. She said to her, all that you tell me, I will do. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. When they came together, the Lord made her conceive and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without next of kin, and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her bosom and became his nurse. The women of the neighborhood gave him a name saying, a son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse, the father of David. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. God. Unless the Lord builds the house, their labor is in vain who built it. Unless the Lord watches over the city, in vain do the sentries keep their vigil. It is in vain that you rise so early and go to bed so late. Vain too to eat the bread of toil, where God gives sleep to the beloved. Children are a heritage from the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is a gift. Having children when you are young is like equipping an archer with wonderful new arrows. Happy are those who have filled their quiver with such arrows. When they argue with their enemies at the city gate, no one will be able to make them feel ashamed. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf nor was it to offer himself again and again as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
The Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Teaching in the temple, Jesus said, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive their great, greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and he said to them, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. This morning, our Gospel passage helps us to reflect upon our own spirit of stewardship as we continue to celebrate this thing called the Christian church that has been going on since the time of the disciples. And the story reminds me of my childhood. I grew up in a Pentecostal church and a storefront church, for those of you who have heard of storefront churches. It wasn't really a church building like the beautiful one we have here at St. Athanasius. It was literally kind of in an industrialized area and it seated no more than about 50 people. Um, and that was the church that I grew up in until I was 19. And in a uh, little south, south of here in South Central Los Angeles. And one of the things though is, is a fond memory of mine is this idea, this concept of stewardship, of shared responsibility. And I began to see that modeled much like the spirit of the, the widow in the gospel passage by the, the, the church family that I grew up with. You see, every Sunday, um, even though these were working class and people who were below the poverty level, um, they had a huge lunch banquet um, every Sunday after the church service without fail. Not just coffee and cookies, we're talking macaroni salad, potato salad, regular salad, a fruit salad, um, uh, jello molds, uh, uh, chicken and barbecue and fish and pies and cakes and on and on, there's more. But by the time it got done, and let's not forget the paper products because no one was washing any dishes and the plastic spoons and plastic forks and napkins and people thought about, some people would just bring the, the covers to, to cover the, the tables that we had. And they were long six foot tables and they lay them out. And I remember by the time everything was done, it was just, a huge banquet of food that went on and on and on. You would not have believed by seeing that banquet that these were folks who had modest incomes. And there were also people in the church that may have not been able to due to their age or not having a car, be able to get to the store, still found ways to partake in the shared responsibility. And I remember a woman that I called Aunt Mildred. And Aunt Mildred was almost 90 years old. And she was a pensioner. She didn't have a lot of money. She couldn't drive. We often picked her up for church, but she felt 
very strongly she needed to contribute. She needed to contribute to the banquet that we had each Sunday. And so in her backyard, she had beautiful, a beautiful rose garden. And so every Sunday that we had our banquet, we knew we would always have fresh roses placed upon the banquet table. You see, that was her way of giving of her talents and treasures. And then we had someone else who wasn't necessarily able to provide something financially, but she made sure that she would uplift her voice and song and sing a few uh, inspirational tunes during this wonderful banquet time. Children were not immune from the shared responsibility. We were often also um, able to contribute by helping to serve our elders, by getting up and making plates for folks that might have been able to walk very well. We were also able to participate in the singing and sometimes reading poems and little inspirational things because see, it was a church family. It was vibrant, it was rich because it was coming from a generous spirit and a, and a, and a giving heart. And I think that's what the gospel passage is about today. And I think that that's the healthy church um, that we have, regardless of denomination, you have a healthy church when everybody doesn't just contribute something, but they contribute with a generous spirit and a giving heart. You see, it's something that you look forward to doing, right? It's something that you're itching to do. It's something that if you can't get there for that particular day, you know you have missed out and more importantly, people have missed out on you. And that's the kind of beloved community that we are attempting to create. This is what Jesus has called us to do. You see, it seems somewhat cynical in, when he's talking about what he sees in the temple. But what he's also telling us about is, you know, um, everybody who gives money is not necessarily giving money for the right reasons. Everyone who is in positions of power is not necessarily wielding that power in the way that Jesus has intended. But if your heart is right, give generously. You can give a lot of money if you have a lot of money. That is a blessing from God. You can give a lot of your talent if you have a lot of it to share, that is given to you by God. And I think what Jesus has critiqued more than anything is not so much the rich folks were giving their money, but why they were giving their money. And at the end of the day, they are just like the widow. They're no more, no less. Her giving was out of her heart. Her giving may have been not knowing where her next meal was coming from. And the idea is that if you give to the point that you still may have to think about, hmm, what, what's going to happen here? Am I going to have to sacrifice something? Um, that's where our faith comes into play. And so this is only something that each individual can gauge. You know, some denominations are, are, are real good at preaching prosperity, gospel theology. You give money and then you're, you're going to get tenfold. You're going to increase your territory. Well, you, you hit the wrong denomination if that's what you're looking for today because that's not quite, I think, how it works. I think you give without expectation of anything other than that you are trying to be a loving steward of Christ, a loving member of the Christian tradition that says that we are lucky, we are grateful that we are children of God and that we are Jesus's own and that we are here to spread the good news of Christ. You see, that is why we want to have this generous spirit and giving heart, because we know the church needs to function so we can do the work in the vineyard. Remember what Jesus said. There, the harvest is plentiful out in the world, but the laborers are few. So for those of us who are being called as laborers to the vineyard, there's a lot of work for us to do. But you see, the burden is, 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 is transformed into a burden that is not going to break anybody's back because of something called stewardship, shared responsibility. You see, if we all give of ourselves, of our talents and our treasures, we can accomplish a lot. We can accomplish a lot in this world. We can accomplish a lot in the church. We can accomplish a lot for each other. You see, a healthy church is constantly growing by the spirit of invitation. You see, that's free. 
You can invite a friend. You can invite a stranger to church. You don't know what they're going to encounter at church, but the Holy Spirit does. And although we as Episcopalians often like to say we don't proselytize, um, invitation is not proselytization. Invitation is simply telling someone who loves you that you know or may not know you, but you're having a relationship with to simply make an invitation. No one is saying to have them uh, uh, be uh, come a, uh, uh, an Episcopalian and be confirmed and baptized. No, we're simply saying, I want to invite you and to share about someone you know named Jesus. And by your modeling in the world and among your colleagues and friends, they may see a little light in you. And some may say, what is that about you? There's something different about you than other people. And I'd like to know more. You see, when the Holy Spirit is working in the world, this happens, church. It happens all the time. You don't need to worry about what you need to do. You just need to have the faith that God and the Holy Spirit are going to be at work. And we need to be open and come from a spirit of abundance. Bishop Diane often talks about stewardship from, and her critique often of congregations is, we sometimes operate from a, uh, a spirit of scarcity. And that makes sense during times like this, right? I just finished doing a Spanish sermon. I almost went, que no? But what I'm basically saying is that uh, to come from the spirit of scarcity means you're counting your pennies. And you're saying, well, you know, I was going to, you know, go to the store and I was going to buy that new pair of shoes because, you know, I have an important interview. And, and so I think I, I may need to hold on to some money but you, you, because you think that's all there's going to be. But sometimes when we give, of ourselves and let go and let God. God does bless you when you need what you need. I'm not saying anybody's getting a Mercedes or winning the lotto, but what I will say is that if you are in need, God is going to help you because you are helping God to do God's work in the world with others. Because you may not know that extra piece that you gave that particular week may have been just what was needed for somebody else to benefit from. You see, the shared responsibility can be like the ants and the grasshoppers and the, ant, uh, the ants preparing all the work and having plenty to give. That's what the church should be in the world. We should be the ants and the ant and the grasshopper story. We should be giving. We should be saving. We should be making sure for those who don't have a coat, for those who are thirsty, for those who are hungry, we are prepared to call, to hear Jesus' call. And what did he say? If you see someone with no coat, give them one of yours. If you see someone who's thirsty, give them a drink. If you see someone who's hungry, give them something to eat. God is a jubilee God, setting the prisoners free. We are calling for social justice in the world. We're putting our faith in action and we need to be prepared. And by being together, it's not just a burden of one or two or three people. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that connects us, the ties that bind, that keep us together. And by us pledging to make this shared responsibility to our church and to each other as a faith community, we can do miraculous things in the world. I believe in miracles, church, because I believe in Jesus. And I believe that what we need to do is wake up. Sleepers awake is one of our tunes we have in our tradition. And it calls us to wake up and to renew ourselves. Because you see, sometimes we get lost in the wilderness, church folk. Sometimes we have things like COVID-19 and battles with racism and, and polarization of political parties to the point we are just tired, exhausted, and we can't see a way out. But the light is at the end of the tunnel and joy comes in the morning, church. We are a resurrection people. We are going to rise like Jesus. And so we need to remember who we are and whose we are today. And in so doing, we need to reclaim that we are a resurrection people. COVID can't stop us. Racism can't stop us. And polarization of political ideology can't stop us because we are the Jesus movement. And the Jesus movement will transform us and uplift us to do the work we need to do. So today, let us be grateful that we serve a mighty God. Let us be grateful that we serve an ever loving God. And let us be grateful that we have the gift of the Holy Spirit and knowing that all blessings come from God and through God, all things are possible. So during this season of stewardship, let us give generously. Let us give of our talents and our treasures and let us give up each other. And more importantly, let us give in the world so that all can know that by our love, 
We are Christians. Amen. In your kingdom of surprise, God of all people, it is the broken who bring healing, the lonely who reshape communities, the vulnerable who feed us, the shoved aside who come to rescue us. You feel no shame, fear no harm as you walk among the poorest and the weakest feeling completely at home. In your kingdom of unexpected grace, Jesus who watches those we don't, it is not those with million dollar smiles and $5,000 suits who share the gospel, but the little child with her smile, the wisdom wrinkled grandparent stories, the trust of those who give from their scarcity. In your kingdom of amazing wonder, spirit who calls us not to be afraid, it is not those who seek the limelight or go around on book tours who teach us, but those whose hope is offered freely, whose joy never runs empty, whose welcome is never taken away. Thank you for the voice of your love that keeps singing of the power and weakness, the wealth and simplicity, and the freedom and safety that is found in walking your humble serving way. The congregation is invited at this time to share names for us to hold up in prayer. So I invite you all to unmute and show yourselves as willing um, to share who and what is on your heart today. Healing for Brian Samuel. Amen. Amen. For my friends, Diana and Vinny, as they continue on their quest to um, have a baby. Mm. Amen. 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 I'd like to pray for um, my niece Finley, whose mother passed away recently, um, and for my brother Louis, and for um, Finley's mom's family. Amen. I would like to pray for our friend Marcus in Germany, who has uh, tumors in his brain, and they recently discovered there are more tumors and he's going to start radiation but it's uh the doctor has indicated it's not to cure him it's only to prolong his life so um ask for prayers to make his uh, future days happy and painless Amen. and also for uh, i've just found out that the father of a very close friend in Germany has just died. His name is Heinrich and uh, he was just a, a gem of a person, a, a great historian and teacher. So I ask for his prayers for him too. Amen. 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 Hi, 
I'd like to offer a prayer for the, uh, I don't even know what they're victims of, but uh, there was mass casualties in, in Houston, Texas the other day at a, uh, at a music show. Uh, and I, I don't know if it was a stampede or what it was, uh, but it was a very dangerous situation. A bunch of people ended up passing away unexpectedly. Amen. Amen. I'd like to ask for prayers for Fritz, a good friend of mine who has been diagnosed with colon cancer and started treatment last week. Amen. Amen. I'd like to ask for prayers for my hus a husband's cousin in Italy, Marie Marina. Um, she's having cancer and now some more problems where she's she's hospitalized and and hopefully only temporarily paralyzed so mm -hmm. i'd like to pray for her to to get to get better amen 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 i'd like first for my daughter christine who's um had some irregular heart tests that uh, are concerning and she is scheduled to have surgery later this month and um, so hopefully we can heal the heart uh, or postpone the surgery. Amen. Amen. And prayers for my son Jonathan as he goes through some difficult times. Amen. 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 I would pray for the the people of the world as they go through the some difficult times. Amen. All the people. Amen. And that's it. And we can't hear you. I would like to pray for our planet too, as she goes through our many difficult times and uh, hopefully she'll make it. Amen. 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 I'd like to pray for the global north to wake up to the global south and how it is absolutely in the throes of devastating climate change, causing starvation, war, um, and all sorts of other suffering. And I would just like to pray, I don't, for us to, to not throw the global south under the bus again. Amen. 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 I'd like to give thanks for this community and remind us all that Amen. all of these um, prayers for help, we also offer our prayers of thanks to God for the blessings in our lives. Yes, Amen. indeed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> nice. Paul, anyone? Thanks for Guy and his uh, wonderful arrival in our community. Amen. 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 I would like you to mute yourselves once again. God, our Redeemer, in sustaining the lives of Naomi and Ruth, you gave new life to your people. And we ask that from age to age, new generations may be born to restore life and nourish the weak by returning to you those things we once thought ours. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. 
God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore and strengthen us through Jesus Christ, our savior, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you, Frank. Let yeah, us grace one another with that peace. Peace be to you, Frank. Heaven, right. peace be with you. John, peace, Dolores. Peace, Peace, to see you. God's peace. Brian, Marissa, Brian, Marissa, Brian, Marissa, 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 Today is Ed Cruz's birthday, um, and I would like us to sing, and um, it would be great if, um, I don't know if Rachel, <laughs> you could, could yeah. lead us, um, mm -hmm. and I'm going to uh, let's see if I can find you. Where, where, there you are, Ed. <laughs> Unmute, everybody. <laughs> I have many red yep. microphones there. Let's sing. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday Happy birthday to you. Anymore. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Ed. Thank you so much. Thank you, folks. Another 49th birthday. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> right on. We are in the month of stewardship and pledging uh, at St. Athanasius. And um, each of these Sundays, we will be having one of us share their own story about pledging. And um, today, on his birthday, uh, Ed is going to share with us. So, Ed, let's um, have you come you on go. again. Thanks for the birthday greetings, by the way. Why I give to St. Athanasius? Three things come to mind. Practical. Giving will ensure the continuance of the church, mission, and all its ministries. Biblical, the scriptures talk about giving. Jesus Christ talked about giving money on numerous occasions. Priorities, each of us has a unique situation in relation with our income and resources. Growing up Roman Catholic, pledging was foreign to me. Upon becoming Episcopalian, that pledging is now a part of my life. At the present time, St. Athanasius is a mission church. Giving is now more crucial to maintain the church's status quo. I give because I love St. Athanasius. All its diversity, its outreach, 
its minister. Wonderful music by an organ, organist and choir director, Evan. Beautiful voice of cantor, Rachel. You must admit it's like attending opera. I ask you this, what does St. Athanasius mean to you? Does it enrich your life and better it in some way? I do have a struggle that I ask myself, do I give enough? Giving is according to the alignment of all your resources and you can start from there. Lastly, to me, giving is also about growing in my faith. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> So much, Ed. You're welcome. So, just a few more things. Um, this afternoon, uh, we have an opportunity to partner with Nefesh and Beyond um, in Echo Park uh, at the lake. Uh, there is going to be a multi faith social justice circle that is uh, beginning. Uh, this is going to meet um, periodically or, or regularly. Um, there's going to be a social time for us to get to know each other from 3 30 to 4 30. And then from 4.30 to 5.30, we're gonna have this spiritual circle for people committed to social justice as volunteers or staff or just committed people. Um, and so if you would like to participate in that, I actually put that there would be three of us from uh, St. Athanasius, there can be more or less, but um, uh, if you would like to go, there is a place that you could uh, click on that. And this is in the, um, I think in the email I sent yesterday, as well as the Gazette from last, last Sunday. Um, this is this Ian Schiffer, um, who is a young man who is on the staff of Nefesh, um, is, is just this beautiful person. And, um, uh, and Gertie, I know, met him uh, when we had that safety workshop. Um, but I encourage, if some of you can be there, I will be there. And um, uh, just come near the boathouse and, and you'll find us. Um, also, we haven't announced really here, but Bishop Diane is leaving. She is becoming the uh, bishop in Western Missouri. Um, and this is sort of her final ministry and mission before she retires. Um, and so we're gonna be having some farewells to her this week uh, here at the um, St. Paul's <coughs> Commons. Um, but I just wanted to call that to your attention. Those of you who have had a relationship with Bishop Diane, um, she is leaving us. Um, I am going to be moderating a panel, an interfaith panel on Christian nationalism at the first AME church. Um, it is going to be um, both something you can um, attend live um, and all of the uh, pandemic protocols will be in place, um, or you can uh, attend by Zoom. Um, uh, there is an interfaith panel uh, William Barber and Liz Theo Harris. Liz is a, an Episcopal priest. Uh, and of course, William Barber, I think most of you know who that is. Uh, a very, you know, sort of neo Martin Luther King Jr. type uh, leading this poor people's campaign. So this is um, something a week from Thursday night um, from 6 to 830. Um, and it's the first of a series of panels. So we'll be looking at, you know, what do we mean by Christian nationalism? Uh, how does it impact our country, people of different faith, etc. cetera. Um, on the 21st, uh, we're going to be having bingo. Um, and no, we're not a Roman Catholic church and we're not raising money for the church. Um, bingo is, is one of the ways that we had fun at our encounter retreats. And um, when we've been dealing with uh, healing from loss with uh, this uh, grant that we received this year, uh, we re realized that one of the losses for many people at St. Athanasius is encounter, these encounter retreats that we didn't have last year, we're not having this year. So bingo is a little piece of that that we're gonna try to have. Um, and it's gonna be immediately following our service at one o'clock on Sunday, two weeks from today. Um, and um, just a kick in the pants, fun, heels up, uh, and we're doing it at Echo Park, um, 
and hoping that some folks from the neighborhood might might join us. The youth are going to help us set up um, with tables and chairs, and we'll have some sound. So um, I don't know that we'll be able to bring Yane back, who is always the caller at uh, at our encounter bingo. Uh, but we'll have somebody fun doing the the uh, calling. And um, Grant has promised not to cheat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want to say anything, Grant, because you're Grant is coordinating this. I'll leave that to everyone's judgment, uh, but <laughs> but uh, this is not to be missed. Cool. Okay. Um, and also in that series of healing from loss, um, Gertie is is uh, organizing and uh, facilitating uh, at least one, if maybe two, half day healing retreats in December during Advent. Um, and the first one will be Saturday, December 4th. Uh, it'll be from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. So um, put that on your calendar. We'll be sharing more details about that coming up, okay? Um, so now we want to come to the offering um, as Ed invited us to, to offer our lives, our gifts. Um, these are the ways you can do it at PayPal, sending a check. Um, and as we do that, um, Rachel is going to sing this anthem, Alers Helen of Richard Strauss. And just a, a quick announcement for myself. I'm, I'm performing next weekend um, and, and with the Verdi Chorus. We're singing with the chorus, beautiful music from opera choruses. Um, so I can put those details in the chat if you're, oh, if you're available to come. That's in Santa Monica. Um, okay. And then a little bit about Alla Zeilen. Um, it's in German, but it it's, means All Souls Day, which was uh, just last week. And uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful song about someone who is seeing a loved one on the one day of the year, All Souls Day. <laughs>
Thank you, Rachel. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. May our gifts not be the crumbs of our lives, but justice for those overlooked by the world, healing for those broken by pain and grief, and grace for those who long to be listened to and welcomed. Blessed be God forever. Amen. God welcomes you to this table. Our God invites you as well. Here, when we think our hearts are hollow and lifeless, our God fills them with love and grace. We lift our hearts to our God. Here in the silence of scriptures, in the word and the wonder, we are called to praise our God. We join our voices in songs of thanksgiving to our God. Then God spoke, go now, and creation rushed forth into the emptiness of chaos. As beauty was brushed on butterflies' wings, goodness was poured into tumbling waters, joy tumbled through desert lands, hope graced the sunrises with glory. All this, and so, so much more, was offered to those shaped in your image, God of love, hope, and peace. But we wanted the adulation sin offered and longed to put on death's garments. You whispered to people, go now. So prophets and poets came with your words of welcome to call us back to you. But we were too eager to embrace foolishness and push them aside. So that we might know of your hopes and love for us, you whispered to your child, go now so that glory might transfigure into grace. And so with those who picked us up when we had fallen, with those who seek to keep faith with you, we join in offering our praise. <laughs> Though holy as you, eternal God, Jesus set it to one side, so we might know of your hope. Born into economic scarcity, he offers us the abundance of your grace. Living among people oppressed by power, he builds a foundation of justice for all. Knowing what it is like to be rejected, he offers a welcome to all outsiders. Experiencing the hunger pangs of loneliness, he calls each of us siblings. Daring to challenge sin's power, he is placed in death's cold cell, where your resurrection power sets him free, as the same promise is made to us. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends, and he took bread and gave thanks to you, broke it and, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and again he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
So as we seek to live as he did, watching and learning from those too easily dismissed by society, we declare the mystery called faith. Come now, you invite us, God of the feast, as you pour out your spirit on us and on the bread and the cup. All we need is a morsel of the broken bread to strengthen us and send us to feed the hungry and build justice, to open the eyes of those who never notice suffering, to lift others back to their feet. All we need is a sip of the cup's grace, to be willing and empowered to go out to set free all the captives of cruelty, to offer a warm heart to those who know only cold shoulders, to share hope, love, and peace to everyone we meet. And when all time and history has come to an end and you gather us from all generations around that table of life and grace, we will sing our praises to you, God in community, holy in one. Amen. And I invite you to unmute. And as we together say the prayer that Jesus taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, Father in heaven hallowed be, hallowed be your, your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. As in heaven. As in heaven. As in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of crime. Deliver us from the power and the power and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Are yours now and forever. Amen. We are one body, one spirit. We will love one another as Christ loves us. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Wherever you are on your journey through life, you are welcome at Jesus' table to receive Christ's heavenly food. And yet today, once again, we are going to experience this sacrament spiritually. And so I invite you to stay unmuted or to unmute yourselves as we say together out loud this prayer, which is our way of together experiencing communion today. Let us pray together. My Jesus, Jesus I believe I that, that you are, you are truly true. present <laughs> in the blessed <laughs> sacrament. <laughs> I love, I love you, you above all, all things and long, long for you in my soul. Since I cannot I now cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Entire. As though you so have already you come, come. Brace, I, you, brace you, unite I, myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. From you. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray. God of abundance, abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God, our Creator, our Savior, and our Sustainer, 
be with you today and all the days of your life. Amen. Amen. Go now, God says to us in this moment. And so we will go to share from our abundance with all who live in scarcity shadows. Go now to serve. Jesus challenges us in this moment. And so we will join in building neighborhoods of justice and keeping faith with all who have been forgotten. Go now to understand. The spirit urges us in this moment. And so we will go to watch and learn from those who welcome outsiders into their lives. Amen. Frank, you're muted. Well, I was inviting everybody else to unmute, but I didn't unmute myself. <laughs> <laughs> We want to say farewell to those who will be leaving us. Um, Adieu. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Rachel, for your beautiful gifts. And Rachel, the witches. Bye, Rachel. Good night. Bye. Thank and good you. rest. Bye, everyone. Have a lovely day. Bye, night. everyone. Have a great night. Bye. 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 Bye.
<laughs> so Hi, how Liam. nice we are a uh, almost a full screen here um, <laughs> so it's nice to see all your faces great to have you back Anne. Um, we've missed you and it's it's really great to to have you back um, and Dolores it's been a few weeks not as long with as Anne, but we've missed you and it's nice to see your face coming on Zoom. I know you've been with us on Facebook, but it's great to have you on Zoom and, and participating like this. So what's going on? Uh, I know, um, I mean, I wanna give the opportunity also, uh, if anyone wants to ask questions, reflect um, about my announcement last Sunday. Um, and, um, for those of you who were not here and may not have heard, I announced my retirement um, uh, on May 1st of next year. Um, and I think most of you have heard that or are aware of that. Um, but I want to give opportunity to, to share any reflections or questions you have. We did have um, uh, last, as I said, last Sunday, uh, the Bishop's Committee was going to be meeting with the Bishop uh, in the middle of the week, and we did. Um, and one of the things that he recommended for us is that we uh, reflect together uh, on what we value in a priest, in a vicar. Um, and so the Bishop's Committee is going to do that as a Bishop's Committee, for starters, but we also want to offer an opportunity to do that uh, on one of these Sundays, um, maybe after church when we can take some time and we've, we've done some thinking about it um, so that we can actually even make a list of some of the things that we um, really value and, and care about in, in finding a, a priest. So. Um, that's something that we'll schedule for one of these upcoming Sundays um, to do, but be, be thinking about uh, what you would like to add to that list and, and make. And then we will be um, meeting with the bishop again in January and, um, you know, looking at that list. And then he and his team really will be looking at people who might, you know, meet those criteria, those values. Um, that we might then uh, review as as um, Saint Athanasius. So those are the steps that we're we're looking. And um, he made you know he has access to uh, a larger um, pool of of potential candidates than I think any of us. And um, so he will be looking, but will not be imposing that on us. He'll be um, sharing options, and then we can in dialogue. Um, or, or you can make a decision. So that's, you know, a report, but I, I want to invite any other questions you might have and, and invite members of the Bishop's Committee um, to uh, Gertie and Grant uh, and Marissa um, to, to share any responses to that. Um, it, was, it was apparent to me Hang on. It was apparent to me that uh, uh, Bishop Taylor is very open to uh, the congregation's uh, feedback or input regarding different uh, possible choices. Um, and he said, you know, if he were to I, appoint someone to the work of a vicar uh, or to that position and that we were not happy with that person, it just wouldn't, doesn't make sense to do that. Um, so there's sort of uh, what I would consider an, a, a clear interest on the part of the bishop to hear from us. Uh, but I think it also therefore is incumbent on us to be proactive about our communication and our, the providing of that input or comment as not only waiting for the invitation, but also uh, putting forth uh, our own thoughts about preferences and values and priorities as we look at this whole decision together. Mm. Well said, Grant. Yeah. 
I wasn't here last week, and uh, I I am I'm happy for you, Frank, and uh, I'm sad I'm sad for us. <laughs> so, um, my sentiments too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah sad, for think... me, sad for me personally, but <laughs> that yeah yeah that's great. Maybe the first step is the elephant in the room is that no one can replace Frank. And we have to How sweet. That. We do that differently. We, but we need to feel that first. Yeah. yeah. And then move yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I do want to say in, in response to what David said, I, um, you know, when I left the Presbyterian church and the, the, the church that I was in, um, I was very obedient and um, part of the protocol for a departing clergy person is not to maintain a lot of contact uh, with with the members um, so that to give a chance to the new um, clergy person. Um, I think I overplayed my hand. <laughs> it was a little too obedient. And um, I feel like I have a friendship with um, a number of you. And I, and I mean, I did there too. Um, but it, uh, I, I just want to say, I'm not going to be, you know, offering sacramental ministry at St. Athanasius in the future, but I don't want to lose conversations with you, David. That's not going to end on May 1st next year. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks. <laughs> I'm fortunate to have your friendship. Thank you. I am fortunate to have yours. Well, Frank, just as important, it's, it, I think that you should know that we may be knocking on your door, invited or not, <laughs> during your retirement. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's literally tricky. I mean, I you know, it's one of those things where I do. Um, I would ask permission, and and maybe the asker um, also might speak to the new clergy person here about you know whether that would be appropriate in this particular case i would never do it around the back or without the the agreement of the current vicar certainly does the congregation have um any say beyond the um you know saying what values that we are looking for in a priest do we have any say over who well i think grant priest? spoke to that uh i don't know if grant you heard annie's question but i think you answered that question in what you said uh, well uh, yeah but just to to underscore this i mean we don't have a formal vote uh, i mean uh, the bishop clearly stated that he will need to make the final call uh, but he uh, he said um, when he puts out a candidate and, and hears back from us that this is not a good idea, I mean, he pretty much said that he, he's not going to override that. Mm -hmm. He what said that. that. He didn't pretty exactly much say it. He that, said that. <laughs> what exactly does that mean when he to put out a candidate? He would have I, someone. That, we see, do we get to? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, certainly the bishop's committee will be able to meet with that person. I, I got the impression that we could ask that person to preach or, yeah, you know, um, so it, it depends on the moment, but I, I think that we could invite that person to come preach and officiate or whatever and, and, and see how we feel. Um, and I think, you know, he didn't say we could, but I mean, he did say we could uh, ask about preaching. So I think that's, there is the opportunity for the congregation as a whole to have exposure to the can candidate. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I think we need that. I mean, we need to. Right. And even though he has the authority, he, you know, as Grant said, he knows that it wouldn't make any sense to override a reservation if we have a reservation. Yeah. Oh. And I think no. I would go as far as to say that if um, 
somebody had a recommendation, a name of somebody to present to him, um, I think that would be legitimate and, and okay. Uh, it wouldn't be good to, uh, it wouldn't be legitimate to offer that person the job, um, but to say, you know, hey, here's a name of somebody. I don't know if you've considered this person, but it strikes me. Um, and so, you know, that wasn't specifically invited, but I don't think it's outside of the spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, I, I also just want to reiterate that I think it's not uh, not the case that we should wait for him either. I mean, he is busy beyond uh, beyond belief, and so it's it might be easy for this process to get glossed over if if we're not watchful. And so, mm -hmm. uh, no, you know, nothing against him. Just saying uh, that we need to try to think this through and be proactive in how we approach it, and rather than waiting. Schedule meetings long in advance. I, I'm somewhat naive, but it's, is there anything technological um, like a um, like a priest finder website, like a dating <laughs> website or something? I, I think that there are channels in the national church mm -hmm. where they can get lists, and of course, you know they. They have lists of their own. We've got an office of, um, can't remember exactly what they call it now, but at one point it was deployment. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I think that our diocese is plugged into the information that they need. And, you know, the Bishop did point out that if we were to consider wanting someone from far away, that creates a financial burden because then there are moving costs and things like that. So I think that initially, you know, the, the search would be within our diocese or surrounding area. Um, and I think that makes sense. We're still recording. We're live on Facebook. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, okay. 